So this is uh, Takuya Umura, who is with uh, NHK. Uh, and as all the folks in the audience know, NHK has a very long history in really deep work in a variety of three-dimensional displays, uh, as well as analyzing the, the theory behind spatially multiplex displays. They, they produce some of the only papers where you could really understand what's what uh, in that field. So he has a, a BE and an ME in mechanical engineering. Uh, and uh, has been with NHK for several years. And so I guess today he'll be talking about uh, a full parallax 3D display. So uh, if you'd please all join me in, in welcoming the speaker. Thank you for your kind introduction, uh, Mr. Habarwa. Hello, everyone. Uh, I'm Takuya Omura of Japan Broadcasting Corporation. Today, I'd like to talk with you about a full parallax 3D display multiplexing, uh, using time multiplexing projection technology. This is the outline of my presentation. First, I'd like to begin by giving you an introduction to the background and objectives of our research. I'll also explain our right field display named Actina Vision as it relates to the future of 3D TV broadcasting. Second, I'd like to give you some details of the proposed time division right ray multiplexing methods used to enhance the resolution of 3D images. Third, I'll explain the experiments we have performed using the two proposal methods. Finally, I'd like to summarize my presentation and give some conclusions. Now, let me begin by showing you our research plan for 3D televisions. In Japan, 8K super high vision satellite broadcasting began in 2018. Uh, 8K resolution is considered the pinnacle of 2D televisions and any content displayed on such devices can be seen very clearly. In future broadcasting, however, uh, 3D televisions will give viewers a strong sensation of being the presence of actual objects. Therefore, we are now researching 3D TV technologies and expect to start such broadcasting services in the 2040s. As things stand now, 3D television display will be expected to meet four requirements. Uh, they must have large screens, uh, provide full parallax, and eliminate the need for special glasses or headgear, and display natural 3D images. Full parallax is considered especially needful because audiences will want to observe the 3D images without distortion, even when they are lying down. Uh, with this point in mind, we have developed Akina Vision, which is a right field 3D display that uses much view images. This figure shows a basic Actina vision configuration. For your, for your information, the word Actina means right ray in Greek. Generally speaking, conventional much view 3D displays can only reproduce 3D images with horizontal parallax. Additionally, only one viewpoint image is projected from one projector. In contrast, Actina Vision allows a multi view image like, sorry, like this. Uh, sorry. <laughs> so, like this. Uh, Yes. Right. Okay, thank you very much. Yes. <laughs> like this. Uh, with both horizontal and vertical parallax to be to be project from each projector. This allows the number of projectors to be reduced. The second key point is our high-density right ray projection system and the use of our top hat diffusion screen, which combine to pro produce 3D images that have smooth motion parallax. However, a particular problem we face is that the, each projector has to project numerous right ray to, rep to reproduce natural 3D images. So. Uh, sorry. Uh, in, in response to this, we propose two time division right ray multiplexing methods aimed at enhancing the 3D resolution characteristics. 
This figure shows the principle of Arctina vision in greater detail. As you can see here, the multi-view images from the projectors are collimated by collimator lenses. Then those images are passed through the imaging lenses to divide them into each viewpoint image. After that, each viewpoint image is condensed at condensed lens one, which is placed at the focal ranges of the imaging lenses. Finally, each viewpoint image is superimposed onto the 3D screen, placed at the focal ranges of the condensed lens one. So the viewer can observe the viewpoints in this viewing zone, but a gap occurs between two viewpoints without using a diffusion screen. Since that gap would cause uh, blind spots in the 3D image, a diffusion screen is used to eliminate them. When a general diffusion screen with Gaussian shape characteristics is used, a significant amount of light ray crosstalk results and the 3D image becomes bluer. Therefore, we use a top hat shaped diffusion screen to reduce the crosstalk. In this way, Actina Vision has realized high density white rays with an angular interval of approximately one degree. In this system, we increase the number of white rays by shifting them using time division in order to improve the 3D image quality. At this point, we should investigate which of the 3D image characteristics, such as resolution or viewing angle, and so on, so improvements in response to the amount of light ray sifting used. To determine the answer, we conducted experiments using the two methods. The first method, uh, called the wobbling method, shifts uh, light rays by half a pixel so that the resolution of each viewpoint image is improved. The second, which is the time division white ray sifting, or TDLS method, is used to sift the multi view images by half a pitch, as shown in this figure. As a result, the number of multi view images is doubled, and the angular interval becomes half. Before conducting experiments, we mathematically analyze the likely effects of these methods. So I'd like to take a moment to explain those results. The viewing spatial frequency beta of the 3D image displayed at position D from the screen is decided by mainly beta max and beta nikist. Beta max is related to the pitch, uh, pitch interval G of the multi view image and the depth display position Z. In contrast, beta nikist is related to the pixel pitch on the screen. So beta is equal to the smaller of these two frequencies. In short, when the wobbling method is used, the pixel pitch on the screen becomes half. Therefore, beta nikist jobs in value and the resolution of the 3D image displayed near the screen is improved as a result. On the other hand, uh, when the TD areas method is used, the viewpoint interval becomes half, which means the, the resolution of the 3D image displayed further from the screen could be improved. Next, I'd like to explain these two methods in greater detail. First, let's take a closer look at the project we developed to use the wobbling method. The wobbling method is a standard method that normally involves the use of a quartz crystal. Therefore, I'd like to explain this method quickly. In terms of advantages, uh, its efficiency is highly independent of wave ranges. In addition, only one crystal can be used to sift light rates. As for its disadvantages, it is difficult to create a large area crystal and the amount of shift is constrained. To realize the wobbling methods, uh, the polarization state of the incident light is switched using a polarization switched uh, liquid crystal or LC via the drive circuit. In this slide, you can see our newly developed compact 4K projector with a wobbling device for 3D displays. A pulse signal repeats on and off at 60 Hz is input to the LC, and the uh, LC response is shown in this figure. 
Uh, the LC delay is slight and the drive circuit is synchronized with the input video. This slide shows a developed display system in which six projectors are arranged uh, as shown in this figure. Uh, each projector displays a multiple image consisting 25 viewpoint images, five horizontal and five vertical. As each multiple image is divided in the imaging ranges to create each, view, each viewpoint image, so the number of viewpoints are checked at the condensed render, condensed, condensed range shown here. In this system, a total of 150 viewpoint images are displayed. This figure shows the experimental results. The two figures on the left side are results without wobbling, while the figure on the right shows the result with wobbling. These charts are displayed at 20 millimeter from the screen surface to the front side. Uh, without wobbling, aliasing occurs at the spatial frequency of 1089 CPR. However, by using the wobbling methods, the spatial frequency is improved to 1720 CPR. Uh, moreover, a smooth image could be observed, so the resolution of the 3D image displayed near the screen could be enhanced via the wobbling method. Next, I'd like to explain how the TDLS method can be used to produce significant shifting, so reducing the angular interval to half. Two special elements called polarization gratings, or PG, are used for the TDLS method. The use of a PG makes it possible to select the diffraction direction according to the polarization state of the incident light. This PG is designed to work for linearly polarized light rates. If uh, incident P polarized light rates are input into the PG, they are only diffracted in the first order diffracted direction. However, if S polarized light rays are input, they are only diffracted in the minus first order diffracted direction. The diffraction angle is defined like this, uh, where large lambda is the diffraction pitch. Another feature of the PG is that the polarization state of outgoing light is inverted. This permits adjusting the PG thickness to obtain the highest diffraction efficiency. <laughs> Using this shift optical system consi consisting of two PGs, our light rays are shifted in parallel. Uh, since the shift amount is decided by the distance between the pages, the TDRS method makes it possible to shift by any desired amount. The shift optical system is set at this position uh, because uh, we don't need to increase the number of imaging ranges and because uh, PG tiling is available. That's why the angular interval becomes half when switching the polarization of light from the projectors. In particular, it should be noted that different multiple images are displayed between the odd and even frames. For example, uh, when considering the viewpoint image pass through this range, uh, the viewpoint image is displayed at this position in odd frames but uh, displayed at the shifted position in the even frames. That is why multiple images with each viewpoint shifted by half are projected in the even frames. The basic display system is the same as in the case of the wobbling experiment. At this position, uh, the six tiled PG are stacked in two layers. The distance between the PG is adjusted to shift by about seven millimeter. The default angle, uh, sorry, default angular interval is 0 0.9 degree in horizontal direction and uh, 0 0.5 degrees in the vertical direction. As a result, we confirmed that the number of 
viewpoints becomes double and uh, the angular interval becomes half. That means a large amount of shift is possible by the TDLS method and that the amount predicted by the theory can be achieved. This slide shows the experimental results of the TDLS method. These teapot images are displayed at 100 millimeter from the screen surface to the front side. In addition, we changed the diffusion angle of the diffusing screen to equal the crosstalk amount. From these figures and the profiles, we can see that the edge of the 3D image becomes clearer with the TDLS method. This in turn suggests that the depth resolution of the 3D image could be enhanced by the use of that method. So to summarize, we discussed our proposed TDLS method, which is more effective when the light rays are shifted significantly. We then verified the effect on the 3D image resolution characteristic in actin vision. In the case of shifting by half a pixel with wobbling, we found that the resolution of the 3D image displayed near the screen is enhanced. On the other hand, uh, when the when the angular interval of multiple images becomes half with the TDLS methods, the depth resolution of the 3D image is enhanced. This method makes it possible to easily enhance the 3D image characteristics without using several extremely high definition projectors. In our future work, we will further improve the 3D image quality by increasing the multiplicity of time division using high frame rate displays. This concludes, uh, this concludes my presentation today. Thank you for your kind attention.